Attention scholars, has this ever happened to you? You're about to write a paper, and as you start your introduction, you realize you don't know where to begin. You try again, then again, then again, until you lose your mind. Let me help you out with a model I call Get to the Point Introductions. The basic idea is to distill introductory paragraphs and sections to their three main parts. Once you've done this, you need only to flesh it out according to the needs of your paper. First, I'll break the three parts down in sequential order, then we can talk about putting them together. The first part is the topic. In academic writing, it's not a good idea to write something without having done some serious thinking about what you want to argue. So a lot of people assume that since they know what they want to argue, they have a topic. This assumption is precisely why writers get stuck here. Naming your topic is less about you, the writer, and more about how your audience gets to the point that you want to argue. Think about how your reader found your paper. Imagine they go to Google. What keywords would they input to get a list that includes your paper? They're probably going to type in a noun phrase, so your answer doesn't need to be a full sentence. Whatever you come up with is your topic. So let's go ahead and move to the next part, the research question. So we just learned that, in terms of introductions, the topic of your paper is reader-centric. Well, the research question is definitely writer-centric. You know and I know that your future paper is worth reading on its own merit. But what occasion would really make your work salient? Well, out there in the ether, there is one magic question that were someone to ask it, you could say, that's the perfect segue, now read my paper. That's your research question. And for you mathletes out there, it's a function of your topic. To write out your research question, you just take the topic, Put down some question phrase around the topic, like who, what, or where. Then write down the issue or problem regarding the topic that you want to address. Top it off with a question mark, smooth out the edges, and you have yourself a research question. See, that wasn't so bad. Now here we go with our last part to the introduction, the thesis statement. Dun dun dun. A lot of writers think that this is the toughest part of the introduction. I find that it's actually the easier part than the topic, because if you've made it this far, you've already done all the legwork. The thesis is just the inverse of your research question. Remember how your research question asks you about some topic in relationship to some issue? Well, your thesis statement deals with the same topic and the same issue. The only difference is that instead of asking about how they are related, you're going to briefly tell me how they are related. The research question asks, the thesis statement answers. I like to think about the thesis statement like an expert soundbite. Let's say a reporter from National Public Radio is investigating a topic on which you just happen to be an expert. She calls to do a phone interview, but you don't answer because you're off being brilliant. So she leaves a message and says, I'm going to be out of the office, but will you call my voicemail with an informed response to this one question? That one research question gives you the opportunity to wax poetic about everything you know. But this is public radio, so she edits your message down to just a few key sentences. That's poignant abbreviation is your thesis statement. You see where we're going with this? You have your topic, research question, and thesis statement. So what does this look like in practice? Let's say someone Googles student services classroom learning. That just happens to be something I know about, so it's likely that they're going to come across a list that includes some of my work. But for them to get to my article, they've got to ask the right question. So if they ask what student services can assist classroom training, then I'm in luck because I have written about how, as a student-oriented and faculty-assisted space, the Writing Center complements the classroom learning environment. Mm -hmm. 
Do you see how my topic in orange is pretty consistent throughout the introduction? And notice that the heart of my research question, shown in yellow, is addressed in my thesis statement. Just as with the thinking behind my answer, in white. That's what an introduction is all about. It helps the reader get to the point of your argument. So when I write introductions, I make a chart and just fill in the pieces like a Sudoku or crossword puzzle. The key is starting with what you know. What this video doesn't show you is that I actually had a better sense of my thesis statement than I did the topic. So then I put down an idea for the topic. Then I gave the research question a shot. Then working on the question gave me an idea for my thesis. This required me to change my question. And then I finally changed out my topic. So the process isn't necessarily linear. If you get frustrated, just remember that you're doing the homework so the reader can just get to the point. They'll thank you for it later. Now let me address some frequently asked questions. How long should my introduction be? Now that really depends on the length of your paper's body section. Your introduction is definitely going to be shorter than your body, but there's no standard formula that I've found. A longer and more nuanced argument will definitely require you to spend more than a sentence or even paragraph for each of the introductory pieces. The beauty of this model is that you can adapt it for writing anything from a single introductory paragraph to an introductory chapter. Well, when will I know if I have a good introduction? You won't really know until you have argued what you intend to argue in the body. If you can highlight your introduction the way I've modeled, and the product adequately sets up anything and everything you proceed to argue, then you've got a good introduction. Now, someone out there saying to yourself, that's it. My last piece of advice is to answer the prompt. Usually your audience or instructor has a question they expect you to address. That's your research question, so use it as such. It's a freebie. In the case that you're writing for a readership without a question, make up a prompt and work from there. That's all I have for now, but that's how you get to the point when writing introductions.